Okay, team, they say that a good coach leads by example. And luckily for you guys, you have me as your coach. So why don't we start getting ready for the match, do a few stretches, throw some warm-ups, and get our head ready in the game. What about the other team? The other team? What about the... We're gonna be in good shape today, guys. Don't worry about the other team. Life is fun, and so is Candlepin Bowling. There have been dozens of bowling shows on TV before, but we're not them, and we don't want to be. Dan Chu Gothi, our coaches one team of talented kids, and I, Rob Taylor, coach another. We're a different type of show, and we're going to turn your notion of bowling show upside down. We are the new generation. Welcome to Candlepin New Generation, a show that believes good things come to those who wait. You're behind on editing episodes again, aren't you, Shut Rob? Shut up, Dan. He's Dan Gauthier. I'm Rob Taylor. We have two teams of two kids apiece. Some of the best bowlers in New England. We're at Alley Cat Lanes. Dan's got one team. I've got another. Dan, introduce us. Well, because it's Ladies uh, Bowling Anchor for the first time ever first in the history time of our show, show history. I'll start off by announcing Ethan Hogue leading off today for us. He led off for my team last time. The only reason I remember that because of the E-Dog e nickname. e back. He actually bowled really well, and he's back to try again. High single of 142, high triple 321. Bowled really well today to get on the show, came in first place. He'll be bowling with Courtney Flood from Alley Cat Lane, so she'll have the home court advantage today, Rob. And... Uh, she hit 265 today and came in first, so I'm putting all my money behind the first place team trying to up my team record. No flood puns. I'm in shock. That'll um, come later. My team, Jason Lagerblade, bowling first. He's out of Alley Cat Lanes, threw a 230 to qualify for the show with a 92 high single, 72 average. He is proudest of qualifying for the show today. This is his first time, but it is not Michaela Tortolot's first time on the show. A former champion, she's in the Tournament of Champions every year. Qualified with a 258, has a high single of 128, and her favorite movie is Teen Beach Movie. No clue. No clue what that is. Uh, but now, we're going to kick it over to Liam Fitzgerald Ledger, expert in child psychology. Liam, give us your take. Last chance for these kids to get on this, and today, Rob, I bet all my money that they'll get on this. That's right, no second chances out there today, Dan, just like the NFL playoffs. By the time you're done editing this episode, Rob, it'll be spring training. I get it, I get it. They take a while to edit, okay? Let's have the guys get up there. Gentlemen, take the lanes. Let's hear it for our guys, everybody. Jason Lagerblade versus Ethan Hogue leading off. First time we've had our gentlemen lead off. This is our Sadie Hawkins format Sadie today. Hawkins. Gentlemen go first, and he definitely wants to go first. Throws out the first <laughs> ball, cuts off Ethan. We'll have to tell him to slow it down a little bit. Ethan gets his first ball underway. Ethan traveled the furthest today, two and a half hours all the way from Maine, and you saw him last month on the show. He's stealing them. Keep tumbling. Yeah, your team, of course, they're stealing them. My Ethan, team's a little them. off. You are not. Ten by Jason. Jason has an interesting style, Rob. It's like he stops his approach about five feet from that line, and then he dives forward with both feet and does a two-footed slide. Well, he earns himself an early four pin lead for Jason. Gets a lot of slide out of it, too. Ethan has the edge in the average department in this match. Ethan is at 92. Jagger, Jason rather. I keep wanting to say Jogger. that because of Lager Blade. Who's Lager, like Jagger? It rhymes. It's you a know? good hockey name. It would be. Lager Blades. But, but in this case, 20, two. 20 pin difference in average, but we've got a four pin difference in the match the so far. The revenge. Yeah, I already got the you got any more? You got any more here, Dan? Ethan a little off, but steals some. Yeah, He's got a makeable spare leave. Look at that. Oh, Are you kidding me? Should have been a strike. Match him. Come on. <laughs> That's not bad. We didn't see any of this in. Uh, We're all staying oh, on the sixth today. He's dying to go for it. Out there. Ethan tries. To oh. Hit the pin, Scott. Yeah, that was he terrible. Dog. He knows how to play his wood. Look at he's shaking his head. He's but shaking he knew. his head, but he's he the one who got the spare. We'll he knew it was tied together. Take another look at that one. He's a little bit off, but it spins back, and Ethan gets the first mark of the match. Ethan, as we mentioned, a native of Sanford Bolarama, has a high single of 145, which is pretty impressive for an 11-year-old. Yeah, definitely. He has a little speed on that ball too. Gets a little, generates a little power on it. There's a good ball. Well, almost. He just missed the headpin. Jason's it good. a little off as well. He takes three. I think Ethan's getting home then, though. That was the closest he's come. He is getting closer. <laughs> gotta, gotta tell Jason to hold up. Hopefully, that doesn't get in Ethan's head. And now Jason looking for the out. So 
I usually prefer to pick bowlers from my team, Rob, who have nothing in their head. That way nothing can distract them. And take after their coach. That's right. We, we train long and hard for this. And that one stay in the lane? I think it did stay on. Hung on. Our cameraman is saying thumbs up. Cameraman's so saying it's good. So we've got a four pin difference early in this match. And our scorekeeper subtracted it, so I guess... The scorekeeper didn't give it to him, so... That's true. We'll have to adjust that during the break. Of course, you folks have no clue what we're talking about because we don't put the, the scoreboard from the actual alleys. I'll type it in yeah, after. That was a tough one, though, Rob. I didn't get a good look at it. It was close. Every time I say one is good, then after we uh, edit the things and I watch it on TV, I shake my head and go, oh my god, we gave that <laughs> Well, meanwhile, we, we have two head pin hits here and two makeable but tricky spare leaves. A little off is Jason. Ethan, a little off as yeah. well. He probably wanted the right tip of that wood. Yeah, I'm going to have to have my team start wearing earphones so I can coach on where to play these. Pretty sure he wanted the wood, though. Nice out there by Jason. Jason's got his lucky shark tooth necklace on. Ethan veers off at the 10, so I believe we still have a five pin difference. And going into our last box here, be the first chance for the ladies to take us into the break. I'm a little worried about your lady, Rob. Michaela. Michaela's she's a She's still under 12. Vet. Miraculously, she's yeah. She's been bowling she's for like 13 years on our show. She's 11 now, finally. She has, got I think she got on the show when she was about, what, five, I think? I think she beat Jonathan Boudreau, if I remember right. Wow. Ethan's not going to want to sit down. He finally found the pocket he with has a nice been. Both of our bowlers have found it. Two consecutive Man. head pin hits. He's also going like to this leave. very makeable spare leave. Do you want that one on the left, I would think. Oh, man. Hey, hey takes it afterwards. It. Great shot Way by Ethan go. Hogue. He deserved it. He's going to hand Courtney a bit of a lead here going into the break. Jason looking for the out. Jason's bowling well up there. I'm yeah, proud of what he's, he's doing. He's got a brother. Another linger hose so and So now our ladies blades. will take the lane. Another logger blade. And uh, he bowled well today, too, his brother. Happy to see both of them. Now this is Courtney Flood in the red versus Michaela Tortolot in the yellow. I'm not sure Courtney's been with us before. She comes to all the events. I'm not sure if she's made it onto the show before. Hopefully she'll have a flood of good luck today. Oh, there it is. Both of our bowlers on the head pin. Gotta like Courtney's leave a little bit better though. If this hangs on. It does. Oh, Fantastic shot by Courtney Flood. I gotta give her credit. That was beautiful. Let's hope Michaela doesn't Michaela drown under two. pressure. Okay. Okay. <laughs> You keep thinking of them. I'll, I'll keep the rest of this commentary afloat. Ooh. Okay. Michaela gets the 10. Courtney now looking to build on the lead here. Throws that right to left hook, trying to keep it on. She'll get three in the corner. Takes out the triangle on the left side. Things didn't exactly rain down on that one. Three Michaela have to now. Do. Mm, Courtney going. We'll have to have a little <laughs> chat with him during the half. <laughs> Courtney's oh! right back in there. Two consecutive marks for Courtney Flood. <laughs> and Rachel's making sure Courtney knows to wait for Michaela, which is good. Michaela now going to try to grab a mark. Oh, oh ah, boy. Here's a little left. I, I, her ball doesn't, you, doesn't usually do that very left. I thought when she left her hand, I thought she had that. So she's going to try to get a big out here. You're going to have to draw upon that experience on your team, Rob. My team's jumping out to the oh, lead. It's breaking right back in there. We have the ability to... To make oh, up yeah, definitely do. And it's a good time to mention it now. Remember the, the kids in this age group, they have get three the marks in a row, set of bowling balls. That's right, they get in that raffle. Courtney's balls hooking in there. Well, I was hoping to get one of those lucky steal all the back pin shots. Yeah, I get it earlier. No, steal, no, no, not Team Shoe. Michaela, looking to do it the way you're supposed to. Get back in there. Oh, maybe not. That one comes out of the gutter. She'll need to reset. You can, they can do that on the, uh, or they can do it there. Well, they can reset there. I They're going to do it probably from the Mikhail's computer, Mikhail's going to need to do it from back here. Mike, try to reset it for her. You did. Okay. Just needs time to get the pins probably around. Maybe. So, Michaela will be bowling her second ball as the first one came out of the gutter. Courtney did not make the spare, but she's still building out a nice little early lead here for your team. We're getting into the double digits. You can even convert that for a 10. I mean, it's a tough, tough 10 to make, but she's supposed to lighten up between the 5 That's and true. the 9. Michaela veers a little left there, so she's going to look for the out. I don't think I've ever seen Michaela throw a gutter ball. I don't know. That was unusual for her. Michaela has an 87 average. So it's a strong 87. She tends to thrive under the pressure too on our show. She gets oh, yeah. a nice little eight here. Might or steal nine. another one. Does nine. Yep, gets the before. nine. I don't even think she hit reset, so no, I wouldn't want to even penalize so her. For nine. A and, pin and, and the computer gave it to her too. Yep. So right now the difference is 14, and Ethan has a ball going into the second half. 
Kayla's going to see if she can maybe chip that Ooh, down into nice the single ball. digits. Courtney right back in there. Uh, not much to look at. Michaela, not much better either. That's tough. I don't even know who I like better. If Courtney goes left, she might be able to slide something over if she's able to take the seven. As rough as it seems, I think I like Michaela's better, but it's still a hard leave. She's going in a decent spot over on the right there. Flip it. Come on, carry. Oh, what a bid by Michaela Tortolot. Hey, when you get two and a half pins, that's a pretty good bid. That was bid. the spot, too, I thought. I thought the I was looking the whole time. at the five pin, but uh, you know, I can definitely... I mean, look how close it came to going. She played a good... Courtney's. That's a weird little out there. Michaela picks up the 10. She's going to gain two. Let's take one more look at that spare attempt by Michaela. See that wood cutting across the lane nudges the seven pin, just not quite enough to take it over. She'll make that in a couple years. A little more muscle on the ball. <laughs> Brian's looking at it as if he wants another uh, flood pun, but... But you're you fresh know. out. Nah, it just weren't Reservoir's funny anymore. Reservoir's dried up. Michaela a little off the head pin. Wood coming back to touch. Now, Courtney's got, I think if she hits the wood, she's got if any, it, I think. The only worry I'd have is maybe going in front of the 10 pin. There you go. Oh, and she picks it up. Nice shot by Courtney Flood. She and Ethan go into the break with a mark. Great bid by McKinney. So where you want to well. be. And so Team Shoes going into the break with a double digit lead. Feeling confident, Rob. So your team's doing well. We're going to see if you do well against our sideline reporter. Liam Fitzgerald Ledger went most over his average this week. We will see if he can take Dan down after the break. Welcome back to Smoke the Shoe. Our sideline reporter has gotten out of his fancy clothes and he is going to try his best shot at taking down Shoe. Liam, you've been great on the sidelines. How do you think you're going to do in this box? I think I'm going to smoke the shoe this time. <laughs> I think you are too. What has it been like for you as sideline reporter for us this season? What have been some of your favorite parts? Some of my favorite parts? Being in my home lanes. And, and trying to get a spotlight in front of all the bowlers. <laughs> well, you've been doing a great job at it, Dan. Why are you even going to try to take this kid down? And he's got two last names. I'm not a big fan of people with two last names. Fitzgerald Ledger. It's going to go down. Liam, you take down, Dan. Good luck, my friend. You are bowling for a spot on Nesson and a set of bowling balls. Good luck. Let's hear it for Liam, everybody. <laughs> Liam is a sideline reporter extraordinaire. And he throws the first ball, cuts Shu off. Very nice little six. Now remember, we're giving the top six scores overall. are going to get a shot on Nesson, too, for the people who don't beat Shu. Shu's got a one-pin lead, but Liam's got them all in the same spot. And Liam sizes it up, makes his moves. Going to get one, at least. Now ties do go to the bowler. Shu veers right. Liam's trying to get one. Oh, it sneaks just off. We need one more. Here goes Shu. <laughs> and <laughs> Shu picks up two. So Liam doesn't get him, but he's going to be have a shot at getting one of the higher scores. Great bid by Liam. We'll be back with the rest of our match. Welcome back to our second half. Before we continue the action, we're going to send it over to our sideline reporter, Liam Fitzgerald-Ledger. Liam, have you seen any good shots so far? No, I haven't because I was at one of those machines where you get these if you win. What game were you playing over there, Liam? I was like playing that uh, pinball machine. And there you have it, Dan. All right, let's have our gentlemen go. Let's hear it for our guys, everybody. <laughs> the difference is, what's the difference, Dan? I didn't math this out yet. Oh, no. Well, what regardless, we're starting off with a nice little nine pin drop there by Jason. That's what my team's going to need to cut back into this. We got a four fill on ours. Oh, hang on over there. Catch the cap. What a oh. shot. What a read by your bowler, Rob. That's right. You got to see him where. He had a good quote while he was here between strings. He told me, bowling is hard. <laughs> it's a true fact. Not like ten pin. No, no. Not where they could just spread oil down and create 300 games. We got to earn them here in Candlepin. Never so been a three under Jason game. has a chance to really gain a few. He gains three in the box. Now well, he's over know, in the technically corner. Technically, your bowler didn't do anything wrong there, Rob. He did bowl in turn. <laughs> yeah, he did. He's doing great up there. Let's see what you're doing, making fun of my team. Jason's doing a phenomenal job up there. Gets himself within five of his opponent. His teammate's down six, so it's an 11-pin difference. Courtney Flood has a mark that she'll be filling going into the second half. Just in time for our strike. Close. Tough half Worcester for Ethan. 
Jason looking to get back in there. We would really want to take just a second and thank all the uh, pro bowlers who donated sets of balls to me over the past couple months. Today was the day where we gave them away to all the kids who showed up who didn't have sets, and we saw some very happy kids with that. I'm going to try to continue that through next year. I've got plenty of leftover ones, and uh, just seeing how happy they are just makes it worthwhile. It was extremely cool, and the balls look great. You got them refinished. They look fantastic. Send a few kids home with some new sets. Yeah, thanks to Glenn Moody for helping with that, too. So tough box there by Ethan. Gets this match right back tightened up. Yeah, I'll say one pin match for the boys. And five pins the difference in total. And so Jason is doing a good job chipping away here. We mentioned earlier in this match that he's only a 72 average. He's going to get that in about a box or two. You know, I don't think that their averages are really as far apart as they may appear on paper either, Rob. Whoa, look at this! Carry that! That pin moved! Oh, there it is! Yeah, he deserved that. He did it's, deserve it. I for, thought for a second it was going to slide two or three inches and stay up. But. Great shot by Jason. Ethan yeah. a little off, too. He's going to really need to out here. I was saying, despite Ethan's higher average, I think his home house is a slightly faster house. The alley cat is not easy. It's honest. They will fall here, but you have to put the ball good on the pocket. You can't just hit the front pin. It has to be a good pocket hit, and then they'll come. So that makes this a two-pin match. Now the hits are even. And so Jason Ooh. with a chance. Boy, this match get close fast. The real opportunity. He's doing a great job chipping away, and he's right back. Oh, I thought he had the head pin just off it a little to but the left. Six isn't bad at all. Six is a fantastic head fill. So that gives himself a four-pin lead. About time for E-Dog to reach deep here. And he's been a just a ball. little off, a little on the right side, and he's back there on the three-pin. I mean, both have equally makeable leaves. Jason's back in there. Take it. Oh, come on. It's wobbling. That's what I'm talking about here. I mean, on a lot pick. of houses, that ball would have carried the four horses. Just a little light. Ethan looking to cut in as well. Man, the, same, the same thing, thing happened on the same ball. <laughs> Both of At them least you get consistency here, don't you? That was good. Both of them maybe just a little too light. They could have deflected off the head pin a little more. The ball might have I mean, caught it, but that's that's a good spot it for it, regardless. It has to have been it, but yeah. but when I see the balls hit where they hit that's both of them, it. it definitely looked like a good hit. It didn't really look light. Sometimes you see it's going to be like you just know you're not going to get it. So we mentioned Jason's 72 average. He's at 87 in the ninth wow. already. Talk about stepping it up for the cameras, Rob. You know how to pick them. And so now we're going to see something we haven't seen before. Our ladies trying to hold the lead and trying to make the comeback. We're going to have a tight match here. E, e Dog shaking his head. I know what this is like. Sometimes you just fight Ooh, another the whole nice way. Bit by Jason. He just seemed like a hair off. He was just and, on that three yeah. pin a little bit instead of the head pin. Got a couple of tough leaves, and now he might be trying to over adjust. And when you do that, it's just a matter of trying to get out of the boxes and trying to keep it close. Just trying to hand it to your partner with a chance. Brilliant 97 game by Jason Lagerblade. Yeah, what a half. An awesome game by him. Ethan looking to get an out. He gets five, so that is going to be a 16 pin difference on the side of the boys and then a four pin difference on the side of the girls so it's a 12 pin difference as our ladies take the lanes i don't think they're not used to going up second oh the difference in the ladies rob i think is six not four you are correct so so a 10 pin difference yep. in the match minus this ball by courtney flood courtney throws a strike and, and she's be got command up. again we should also mention that these two teams Ooh, what a great ball by michaela in addition to bowling each other, as Courtney's going to put this ball, it's hooking in. Oh, you got a little bit of a nice break. break. I mean, that could have been a two, so we'll take five. These teams are chasing a 184 score. If they break 184, they'll earn themselves a bye, and Michaela's looking to do it. Great start by her. Isn't it funny, Rob? We say she steps it up when she needs to, and right on cue, sticker at anchor. And yeah, she has a chance to close out a match. She's never had the chance to do it before. Right. It's like you hear Claude for the Bruins coach always saying you got to close the match, and that's what... Michaela's She's got doing. the chance to do it in the black and yellow. It's closing. Yeah, that's a good point. So Michaela now looking to add to the lead and give her team a shot at that bye. It was Willow Baker and Anthony Callie that are currently in the first spot. That was from the Leo Super Bowl stop. Jenna Ward and William Merrow are currently in second from Maine. Hook. And both of these ladies are looking to join them on Nesson. Nice little break there by Courtney. She's got a spare leaf. Favorable break by Courtney. Now she's got to look at the wood and consider if she wants to play the wood on the side or drive the head pin straight through. The ball moves so slowly, too. you got to wonder the way it's going to work. On the oh cap. Boy. Oh, man. Didn't you think that was going to carry the head pin where she hit An it? inch right, and she probably yeah. catches the cap and gets the head pin. And an inch left, she probably deflects the wood properly, so exactly. the wood takes it. So that was maybe the one spot. Courtney looking to break her ball in there. A pair of eights. So no gain on either side, and that is going to 
keep this a 21 pin match? No, 11 pin match. 11 pins. 11 pins for the Evil Empire. And so Courtney is going to need a mark and maybe a bat out there. There's the mark right here, Rob. Looking to go Brooklyn. Catches it light. That's a tough one. Michaela looking to be on her mark, a little right. It's getting pins though. Courtney's going to be on that wood. Carries three. Nothing to fly over to the seven though. Yeah, it was tough. I was trying to figure out where she'd want to go on that one to get something to carry over to the seven. And a nine by Michaela. Courtney trying to gain one here, knock it, it down could be to a ten. Big pin. Ten is better than eleven. She's on yep. it. And so with two boxes left, we've got a ten pin match here. And both of these teams have a shot at breaking that 184. Michaela a little off. Now maybe the opportunity for Courtney. Now well, ball's breaking left. We'll see what she gets to look at. Well, makeable. Four horsemen plus the eight pin with a favorable piece of wood behind the one in the three. I don't know if it'll catch it on the way. I'd rather have the, the wood wall. than not have it. Absolutely. Ball's breaking in. Doesn't swing back. It's hard to predict how much her ball is going to break until it actually it gets there. So now she has a chance to try to get this one into single digits. Oh, Michaela's that's gonna a little be a off. Big, uh, it will be in single digits no matter what. She can really chip it down. Put that ball on there. Nice nine. So now, so now it's you seven need pins. Mark with the seven fill or mark with the six fill or something like that. And then Michaela needs a seven to break that 184 score. How great would it be if uh, Courtney just threw a strike here? That would be a huge momentum swing. You know, tough too. So lots of bull four here for Courtney. To wonder one no, ball gets away from Michaela. But same leaf. Same leaf. Last this one. one might be even a little better because that wooden back has that pin locked up. So Michaela looking for the out. She can put a lot of pressure on with a big out here, and that's tough. Hook. Does hook, force hook, Courtney hook. to mark though, and it's not going to come back. So Michaela and Jason are going to take this match. Now the question is if she can get seven to tie the top score. And she does. That's the ball we wanted to see from Courtney right there. Nice out by Courtney, but Jason and Michaela Tortolot are going away with the victory. They throw a 185, so that earns them a bye by one pin. I see a 181. 97 plus 88. Oh, I'm looking at the wrong team, Rob. 185, four pins the difference. Great match by our teams. We'll talk to them after the high-low jack. <laughs> Ethan Hogue is going to take his shot at Candlepin Bowling's most iconic shot. Woof. That's the E-Dog. He generated a cheer. Ethan Hogue, runner up two consecutive episodes on us for the show. He traveled a long way today. Hope he keeps at it because sooner or later he's, he's, good. Make it. he's got a lot of talent. He's better than what you saw today. Absolutely. Just days where the ball hooks too much, you don't quite know where it's going. Hoping to make up for it with a nice. Oh, Ooh, what a bit! And now all he's gonna do is slide the ten into the seven That's for it. five dollars. You think it should it. be worth more if you make it for a ten when it's a seven ten left up. But Ethan's got a lot of talent. Yep, definitely. Next up is Jason. Jason Lagerblade, a winner in his debut. The 11 year old from Plymouth, Massachusetts. It's a great debut. He's got the unique two footed slide. Let's see if it helps him with the shot. Sure. Yeah, he's so. Oh, boy, that's good for a sec. Half potential. That's it. Right that's what it. you want to see where the ball breaks to the opposite side of the head pin so the ball can carry into the corner one. Jason listed his favorite pro bowler as all of them. All of them. <laughs> That's Gotta respect right. that. I like all the pros. Don't want to make any enemies. It's good thinking. Jason oh. looking for his out. That's on it. Oh, Great try man, by Jason. Exciting. He's got that reverse hook. So up next is Courtney. Courtney, yeah. Courtney floats. You know, if anybody has the kind of ball to make a shot like this, it's perfect Courtney. for with that big hook. Right, big hook. She catches the head pin on the left side with that big hook. She's got a ball good chance. Go over. Courtney, in addition to bowling, has gymnastics written as oh. a hobby. Oh, Rob. This looks good. Oh, oh, a little too full. Nice try. Now it's going to be hard when you get a big right to left hook when she finally gets to the 10 pin. I don't know. Try the 7 first. And slips into the gutters now. All Again, all you have to do is slide it over. No problem. It's been done. <laughs> it has been done. I think once for a 10 and once somewhere in the middle of a match. It was me uh, on the high-low jack. Kyle yeah, we Lamont. all know Madden. And, and from the and same lane is Michaela Tortolot, who's going to wrap this one up. So twice now, right? Kyle and Moth and Madison a lot of years ago, Yes, right? correct. Oh, yeah, two times. People say it. Yeah, I think when uh, Kyle and Moth made it, the headpin was still up, right? Exactly, right. 
We'll never know if it was unintentional or not, but Michaela's a little off. Had a shot. Ball sometimes, you don't know which way it's going to go going down there. I didn't know if it was going to break wreck right. A lot of patches on Michaela's shirt. A lot of championship patches, I see. And looking for it. I feel bad. One of the Alley Cat Lane's owners, I think, is going to go try to fix that Hilo Jack, but uh, we're not going to get a hold of him. Big thanks to the folks at Alley Cat, though, today. Michaela's going to look for the out. She won't get it. So good bids by our bowlers. We're going to talk to some of the bowlers in our qualifying round in the gutter, and then we'll talk to these guys after that. John Nichols. Do you want to do in the gutter? Do you want to do the interviews? How about everyone do? I guess Okay, so. you have phone, John. You gotta stop drinking all my soda at home, you know, and taking all my food. It's a pain. I'm not doing this interview. No? No. So uh, how you bowling today, Jared? Um, I did good the first. I did a little bad the second. How, what do you think about your brother Jared? Is he cool? Yes. Oh, that's good. You guys get along well? No. No? Okay. Well, take me through that. What happens? Um, we usually just fight a lot. Welcome back to Candlepin New Generation, and I'm here with Courtney and E Dog. You like that nickname, E Dog? Yeah. Starting with you today because it was Boys Bowl first. What was the difference between the big first half you had on six and then moving over to five? Was there any difference in the lane? Oh, uh, yeah, I didn't think when my ball didn't really curve as much as it did on six and not as much luck. And if it's not curving as much, it takes a while to adjust, huh? It takes a couple boxes. Yeah. Did you finally find it toward the end? Yeah, a little. Then at that time, you kind of ran out of time, huh? Courtney, how does it feel bowling second and getting to bowl anchor? It's better. I really don't like bowling first. Wow, so do you think we should do this more often with the girls bowling anchor? I don't know. All right, something I would definitely consider doing. I thought you guys definitely, you did us proud the way you bowled. Um, did you think there was any difference between two lanes, or were they both pretty much the same to you? No, they're both pretty much the same because I bowl here, and then I just basically bowl on every single lane. That's true. The home house, do you think that really helps? Because I think there's a lot of Alley Cat bowlers who made our finals today. Yeah. All right. We're going to see you back again maybe for the team tournament later this year? Yeah. That's good. You guys are great. It'd be cool if you matched up with each other again because you're a good team and you're going to win eventually. Over to Rob with the winners. Thank you, Dan. I am here with our victors. We're going to start with you, Jason, since you're the one who led off during the match. What was it like in your first ever time bowling on our show? Um, it felt kind of weird. I was a little bit nervous. Was there any way you tried to overcome the nerves? It seemed, were you feeling more comfortable as the match went along? Um, yes. Was there anything you were doing to try to overcome the nerves? Any strategies you were using up there? Like, I took deep breaths so I could focus more on the pins. It seemed to work for you. Um, any advice to somebody who was doing this for the first time? Um, just concentrate on bowling. That's all. And it worked for you. So you're going to be bowling on Nesson now. What is, uh, what is that like for you? Do you watch Nesson? I do watch Nesson. I'm pretty excited. We're excited to watch you too. Michaela, you've been on our show plenty of times before. Was this just another walk in the park for you? Anything different today? Not much. You bowled last on our show today for the first time. Was it any different being the one who tried to close out the match for your team? It felt a little weird because I'm used to the boys going first. Did you like it at all? Was it more fun this way or do you have any preference? Does it not even matter? I don't really think it has much of a difference. Well, you did a great job closing out the match. You guys, in addition to winning the match, you also had the best score of the season. So that means you guys will get a buy in the first round of our Tournament of Champions, which means you're going to only have to win one match in order to win the whole thing. You've been there before. Do you have any advice for Jason, who hasn't bowled on a Nesson show before? Just relax and have fun. Think you can do that? Yes. All right, well, these guys are going home with $50 gift cards, and they're going to have a chance to bowl on Nesson in our Tournament of Champions. We hope you watch those. They're going to start Wednesdays in February at 5 p.m. We hope you check out those matches. We hope you check out all of our matches on CandlePinGeneration.com. From the entire staff at Alley Cat Lanes and from our entire volunteer staff, I'm Rob Taylor from Dan Gauthier. Thanks for watching, everybody. That's right, Dan. No second chances today, just like the NFL playoffs. By the time you're done editing this, Rob, it'll win my life. <laughs> okay, good again, good again. Last chance for these kids to make it onto Ness and Rob. Everything's on the line today. Okay. Looking into the camera. Last chance for these kids to get on Ness and today, Rob. I bet all my money that they'll get on Ness. <laughs> Perfect. Great stuff, my friends.